The Enigmas of Symphosius, by Celius Fermiana Symphosius, translated into English verse. Raymond Ohl, 1928. The Riddles of Symphosius. 1. Flat on top but not flat below, I am turned either way by the hand, different duties I perform, the one part revokes what the other has done. 2. Sweet mistress of a god, the steep bank's neighbor, sweetly singing for the muses, when drenched with black, I am the tongue's messenger, by guiding fingers pressed. 3. At the body's end and no great weight I clung. You would say groan there, so is no one burdened by my weight, my face, though single, productive of many forms. 4. Great powers from little strength I bring. I open closed houses, but again I close the open. I guard the house for the master, but in turn am guarded by him. 5. Fastened with iron am I bound who shall hold many in bonds, first I myself am bound, but when bound I bind in turn, and many I have loosed, nor yet myself am loosed. 6. Earth gave me my body, fire my strength, of earth am I born, my home is always aloft, and the moisture that drenches me quickly deserts me. 7. Tears are, yes are, my lot, but not because of grief. Mine is a skyward path, but heavy air impedes me, and he who gave me birth without me is not born himself. 8. The face of night have I, but not a black complexion, and yet at midday I bring the darkness with me, the stars give me no gleam nor Cynthia her beam. 9. From on high I come in prolonged downpour fallen, from heaven I have dropped, passed through midair, but earth's bosom has taken me in, as soon as it has retaken me. 10. Water was I once, which quick methinks I'll be. Now by unbending heaven's harsh chains bound, when trod upon I cannot last nor when bare be held. 11. Light dust of water fallen with moderate weight, dripping in the sunlight, fluid in the summer heat, dry in the cold, I, who will make rivers, first occupy whole lands. 12. There is a home in the earth which echoes with purling clear. The home itself resounds, but the silent guest makes no sound. Yet both run on together, guest and home. 13. Long, swift daughter of the beauteous forest am I borne along, with innumerable throng of companions equally encompassed, I speed over many paths, leaving not a trace behind. 14. I shall tell you the wondrous beginning of my life, not yet was I born, nor was I still in my mother's womb, though already brought to birth, no one saw me born. 15. I cannot be born, if I shall not have killed my mother. I have killed my mother, but the same end awaits me. My death undergoes what my birth has already caused. 16. Letters have nourished me, but I know not what letters are. I have lived in books, but am no more studious thereby. I have devoured the muses, and yet so far have not myself made progress. 17. Pallas taught me to know the toil of weaving. My garments demand not a shuttle nor the warp its heddle. I have no hands, yet by my feet is everything done. 18. I bear my house with me, always prepared to move, and when I have shifted ground I am no wretched exile, but my wisdom is born of heaven itself. 19. I give vent to hoarse sounds in the water's midst, but my voice with praise resounds, as if it too were sounding its own praises, and though I am ever singing, no one praises my songs. 20. Slow, with tardy tread and beauteous back endowed, learned indeed in my zeal, but by cruel fate betrayed, when living not a word I spoke, who dead in this wise sing. 21. Blind is my face in dark shadows hid, the very day is night nor is any sun by me perceived, I prefer to be covered by clods, thus no one will see me either. 22. Provident am I of my livelihood, to hard work not averse, bearing on my own shoulders stores for a winter freed from care. Nor do I heave great loads all at once, but heap up much bit by bit. 23. Wicked am I, I confess, for what shameful thing does my greedy more fear? I shun the cold, who now with the summer's heat return, but quickly am I driven off, frightened by the deceptive breeze. 24. No good to farmers, to the crops no useful guest, not great in size nor by my right name called, not pleasing to Ceres, no small store I consume. 25. My house is small but the door is always open. I live at slight expense upon a stolen store. The name I have a Roman consul also bore. 26. A letter of the sky am I, written with flying wing, waging bloody war with Mars' swift hazard, nor do I fear fighting, provided that not taller be the foe. 27. I live nine lives, if Greece deceives me not, black am I always though never by grief constrained, though angered not. 
Gratuitously I hurl insult. 28. Night gives me my name from night's early hours. No plumage have I, though I do have the wings of a bird, but I return in darkness and do not expose myself to the daylight. 29. A house filled with prickles, but an occupant of slight form, with an unharmed back, though pierced by sharp spears, an unarmed dweller bears an armed crop. 30. There is a new kind of catching of our game for all, on condition that if you catch anything, you may refuse to carry it off as your own, and what you do catch, you may nonetheless bring back with you. 31. My death is life, I die weener my birth begins. But death's fated end precedes the light of life's beginning. Thus I alone can call the very shades my parents. 32. An adulterer of royalty was I, but wooden members I pursued. And a Cilician mountain am I, but a mountain in name alone. I ride in the heavens and I walk upon the very earth. 33. I am he who overpowers with ravening teeth the two-teethed lambs, seeking a bloody prey and a gory repast. In my great madness I can take away the voice too. 34. Small is my body but greater is my wisdom. I am versed in trickery, cunning, keen-witted, and a wise beast am I, if any beast is termed wise. 35. Jove's fostering nurse, in long hair clad, wandering over the steep heights with step placed with difficulty, I answer the guardian of the flock with tremulous tongue. 36. Born in the fecund womb of a bristly mother, I await from aloft green food, holding divinity within my name if the first letter perish. 37. Unlike my mother, in semblance different from my father, of mingled race, a breed unfit for progeny, of others I am born, and none is born of me. 38. I am named from a river, or else the river is named from me. Yoke to the wind am I, who am swifter than the very wind, and the wind gives me sons, I seek not a mate. 39. Distinguished by my four feet and two hands, I am unlike myself, because I am one yet not one. I both ride and walk, because my bodies carry me. 40. Large is my head, within the parts are small, one foot only but that one very long. And sleep loves me, yet I sleep not with slumber of my own. 41. That I have feet like those of a goose, I do not wish to deny. Nor are there only two, but more you see in row, and yet all these very feet I carry upside down. 42. I am whole in Greek, but I am not whole in Latin. For indeed I am always proffered in poor taverns. I am born in earth, washed in water, dressed with olive oil. 43. Hanging I am born, yet again, suspended I swell. Hanging I am swayed by the breezes and nourished with moisture. Hanging if I remain not, soon shall I be not at all. 44. I bite the biters, of my own accord I bite no one, but many are ready to bite me even though I bite. No one fears my bite, for teeth it has none. 45. Earth's crimson am I, with beauteous blush suffused, hedged about, that I may not suffer injury, I am defended by sharp weapons. O oh happy, if it were my fate long to abide. 46. To be sure, I am not large, but the greatest virtue in me lies, great is my perfume, though my body be small. No sprig of mine works harm nor blushes for a fault. 47. Sweet odour of the grove by fire and fume fatigued, I please the gods above by being placed in the midst of flames, whereas nature has denied me the deserts of sinning. 48. From tears and for tears was the source of my beginning. From human eyes I flowed, but now I start from a tree, the happy adornment of my leaf, but the sad image of sorrow. 49. A mighty tooth am I, kindred to eastern peoples, now have I in segments into many forms withdrawn, my strength does not remain, but my beauty's charm abides. 50. A blade was I once of earth's green grass, but cut down while tender by the steel's hard blade, I am pressed down by my own weight, packed beneath a lofty roof. 51. Two stones are we who both together lie. The first is as lazy as the second is not, the one remains motionless, the other ceases not to be moved. 52. Tween stones was I which pressed and ground me, yet scarce did I escape with all my marrow squeezed. And now my size is smaller, but my numbers more. 53. No couch yoke for me, though it is my pleasure to be wedded. No husband for the marriage bed, through me is my offspring born. No grave to suffer, I know how to bury myself in the ground. 54. A scanty gift upon the curve of the upturned point, deceptive bait I proffer round about in the water's midst. I entice to hurt, my bait to death I first consign. 55. 
long but slender, drawn from thin metal, my pliant bonds I draw close company by my nimble iron, I restore both shape to the torn and fastening to the loosed. 56. Larger was I once by far, while life remained, but now lifeless, lacerated, stripped and fastened, I am laid upon the ground, but not laid away in a tomb. 57. Upon my head I walk, because I hang from a single foot. With my top I touch the ground, and leave behind me headprints, but many comrades suffer the same lot. 58. None can split me, though many cut me. But I am of changeable hue, at some time hence I shall be white. I prefer to stay black, the less I shall fear my fate. 59. I am not girt with tresses nor decked with locks, for within I have hair that no one sees. Hands send me and by hands am I sent back into the air. 60. With countless teeth my body's lengths wholly filled. A leaf-dressed race I feed upon with sharp bite, yet I chew in vain, because the booty of my teeth I spew out again. 61. My twain points are united by one piece of iron. I wrestle with the wind, I fight with the flood profound. I search the water's midst, the very earth too I bite. 62. There stands a grove in the waters, there stands in the stream's depths a wood, and there abides in the midst of the waves the strength of immovable oak. Yet earth gives that which takes upon itself earth's duties. 63. I myself am not heavy, but weight of water clings to me. All my inward parts swell out in spreading caverns opened wide. The liquid lurks within, but of its own accord does not pour forth. 64. Three teeth I have which one row holds together, and one single tooth besides there is below. And me divinity wields, the wind fears, the seas obey. 65. Bound round with heavy iron, with feathers light encircled, through air's midst I speed in winged flight, and when sent, departing I return, though no one sends me back. 66. I who come from cattle's backs am the terror of all cattle, forcing obedience by the well-remembered law of pain. I do not wish to be despised, but on the contrary I do not wish to harm. 67. Fitted with hollow horn, translucent in my smoothly rounded circlet, having my light within like a star divine, at midnight I lose not the face of day. 68. I am looked clear through and do not check the eyesight, transmitting the wandering glance within my parts, nor does the cold pass through me but yet the sun flashes forth from within me. 69. No fixed form is mine, yet none is stranger to me. My brightness lies within sparkling with radiant light, which shows nothing except what it has seen before. 70. Kind rule of speech, I am also the hard rule of silence, judgment upon a greedy tongue, an end to endless talking, flowing myself, as long as the words flow on, that the tongue may rest. 71. Sunk far beneath the ground in the deep soil, I am water that cannot flow forth except when channels are dug through the earth, and I am lifted to the world above, drawn by another's toil. 72. The turf protects a tree trunk, a liquid lurks beneath the sod, a channel of modest size there is which has no banks, in wood's midst is born that which bore wood. 73. I do not straightway die while breath departs, for repeatedly it returns, though often two departs again and now my store of vital breath is great, now none. 74. Deucalion am I, saved from the cruel wave, related to earth, but harder far than it. Let one letter drop the name of a flying creature too I shall have. 75. I have escaped the flames, I have fled the torments of fire. The very remedy opposed to my fate fights with it, I am kindled by liquids, I take fire from water though in its midst. 76. Fire always lies within me, but it is rarely seen, for it lurks within, but comes forth in response to blows alone, it needs not wood to live, nor water to perish. 77. For equal sisters run through skill as if in this way vying, though the task for all is one, and they are equidistant, nor can they touch. 78. We are they who heavenward climb, seeking the heights, whom one row holds together in harmonious fabric, so that they who cling by us are accompanied on high. 79. Mighty mother of the world of cleanliness, bound together by a tenacious noose, when pressed upon the level ground and grasped in two hands, following I am led everywhere. And me too all things follow. 80. Rigid with curved bronze I am fashioned in the form of a wide-mouthed circle. Within is the nimble likeness of a tinkling tongue. Set down, I make no sound, when moved, however, I often ring out. 81. My mother was earth, my father is Prometheus himself, and my ear-like handles control me wreathed round with hollow belly. When luckless I fell, my mother mangled me. 
82. 3 were we once who are yoked in one name, out of three comes one, and three in one are mingled, each one good in itself, better is that which contains us all. 83. Nothing has been taken away, nothing from without has been added, and yet I do not find what I previously left. What I had been, I am not, I begin to be what I was not. 84. The name for sheep in Greek, the cause of great strife among the goddesses, the guile of the girded youth, the care of many sisters, the destruction of Troy what time I brought to an end bloody wars. 85. A noble lineage have I, great Cato's line. One sister is mine, though more are thought to be so. Of smoke is my complexion born, my good taste of the sea. 86. I do not lay claim to strength for my body as a whole, but in a battle of heads I refuse to strive with none, large is my head, my whole weight too therein. 87. I grind all things with great might of strength. One neck have I, but my form is double-headed. In place of feet there is a head, for other parts my body does not have. 88. Ruddy, curved, capacious, bedewed with another's drops, belying with false gleams the colour of gold, devoted to sweat, I succumb to trifling toil. 89. Throughout the whole house there penetrates a harmless fire, there is a great heat in the midst which no one fears. The house is not stripped, but a stripped guest befits it. 90. Devoted am I always to a vow, uncertain of the future. Cast in throes of twofold doubt with varied whirling I am now mourning in misfortune, now joying in success. 91. Earth was I first, in earth's recesses hidden, now fire has given me another price and name, and earth I am called no longer, though with me earth is bought. 92. More have I borne than one body ought. Three souls did I have, all of which I had within me, a pair departed, but the third pretty nearly perished too. 93. A mighty warrior once, to be feared in cruel arms, five feet had I, which no one has ever denied. Now I have scarcely two, plenty has made me powerless. 94. Now may you see what you scarcely may believe, one eye within, but many thousand heads. Whence shall he, who sells what he has, procure what he has not? 95. Between heaven that brings the light and the earth that lies below, through mid-air by learned art the wayfarer goes. But the path is narrow, and does not suffice the feet themselves. 96. Missing. 97. No snares I fear from lurking fraud, for a god has bestowed upon me this gift of form, that no one moves me, unless he himself first be moved. 98. A modest maid, too well I observe the law of modesty, I am not pert in speech, nor rash of tongue, of my own accord I will not speak, but I answer him who speaks. 99. Coming of my own accord I reveal varied forms. I fashion vain fears with no distinction of truth. But no one sees me, unless he closes his eyes. 100. Holding the name of a human being, after death I am left behind. The empty name remains, but sweet life has fled. Yet life outlives death after life's course is run. Riddle 1. Graphim, the stylus. Riddle 2. Horundo, the reed. Riddle 3. Annulus cum gemma, the signet ring. Riddle 4. Clavis, a key. Riddle 5. Katina, a chain. Riddle 6. Tegela, roof tiles. Riddle 7. Fumus, smoke. Riddle 8. Nebula, fog. Riddle 9. Plavia, rain. Riddle 10. Glades, ice. Riddle 11. Nix, snow. Riddle 12. Flumenit Pisces, a river with fish. Riddle 13. Navis, a ship. Riddle 14. Pullus in ovo, a chicken in the shell. Riddle 15. Vipera, the viper. Riddle 16. Tinia, the bookworm. Riddle 17. Arania, a spider. Riddle 18. Cochlea, the snail. Riddle 19. Rana, the frog. Riddle 20. Testudo, the tortoise. Riddle 21. Talpa, the mole. Riddle 22. Formica, the ant. Riddle 23. Musca, the fly. Riddle 24. Caculio, the corn worm. Riddle 25. Mars, the mouse. Riddle 26. Grus, the crane. Riddle 27. Karmix, the crow. 
Riddle 28. Vespertilio, the bat. Riddle 29. Erisim, the hedgehog. Riddle 30. Paduculus, the louse. Riddle 31. Phoenix. Riddle 32. Taurus, the bull. Riddle 33. Lapuz, the wolf. Riddle 34. Vulps, the fox. Riddle 35. Capra, the she goat. Riddle 36. Porus, the pig. Riddle 37. Mala, the mule. Riddle 38. Tigris, the tiger. Riddle 39. Centaurus, a centaur. Riddle 40. Papava, the poppy. Riddle 41. Malva, mallows. Riddle 42. Beta, the beet. Greek letter. Riddle 43. Cucurbita, the gourd. Riddle 44. Sepa, the onion. Riddle 45. Rosa. The rose. Riddle 46. VLA, the violet. Riddle 47. Twos, frankincense. Riddle 48. Myrrh, myrrh. Riddle 49. Eber, ivory. Riddle 50. Phenum, hay. Riddle 51. Mola, a mill. Riddle 52. Farina, flower. Riddle 53. Vitis, a vine. Riddle 54. Amuse, a fishhook. Riddle 55. Acula, a needle. Riddle 56. Caliga, a boot. Riddle 57. Clams Caligarius, a bootnail. Riddle 58. Capillas, a hare. Riddle 59. Pila, a ball. Riddle 60. Sarah, a saw. Riddle 61. Ancora, an anchor. Riddle 62. Pawns, a bridge. Riddle 63. Spongia, a sponge. Riddle 64. Tridens, the trident. Riddle 65. Sagitta, an arrow. Riddle 66. Flagellus, a scourge. Riddle 67. Lantima, a lantern. Riddle 68. Vitrium, glass. Riddle 69. Speculum, a mirror. Riddle 70. A water clock. Riddle 71. Puteus, a well. Riddle 72. Tubus ligneus, a wooden pipe. Riddle 73. Uta, a wineskin. Riddle 74. Lapis, a stone. Riddle 75. Calx, lime. Riddle 76. Silex, flint. Riddle 77. Rati, wheels. Riddle 78. Scalar, a right of steps. Riddle 79. Scarpa, a broom. Riddle 80. Tintinabulum, a bell. Riddle 81. Laguna, an earthenware jar. Riddle 82. Conditum, spiced wine. Riddle 83. Vinum in acetum conversum, wine turned to vinegar. Riddle 84. Malum, an apple. Riddle 85. Panna, ham. Riddle 86. Malleus, a hammer. Riddle 87. Pistillus, a pestle. Riddle 88. Strigulus enia, a bronze cirigil. Riddle 89. Balneum, a bath. Riddle 90. Tessera, a die. Riddle 91. Pecunia, money. Riddle 92. Mulia quae geminos parabor the mother of twins. Riddle 93. Miles Podiger, a gouty soldier. Riddle 94. Luscus allium vendens, a one-eyed peddler of garlic. Riddle 95. Funambulus, a rope dancer. Riddle 96. Is missing in most of the manuscripts, one. Of them, however, has the following in this place, probably. Inserted during the Middle Ages. To take seven from eight and have six left. If you this marvel to believe will deign. Hold eight upon your hands, I'll make it plain. Take seven away, and yet will six remain. Professor Gessner, quoted by Rays, offers the following solution, hold up one hand, 
and you will see that the thumb and forefinger form the numeral V, while the other three fingers give the three. Now cover up the thumb and forefinger with the other hand, and you have taken away two and the V, which is seven. Then spread the third and fourth fingers apart and behold, six remain. He adds, Si quid navisti rectius, candidas imperii, in other words if you know anything better, make no bones of telling it. Riddle 97. Umbra, a shadow. Riddle 98. Echo. In Roman mythology, Echo, daughter of air and earth. Riddle 99. Somnus, sleep. Riddle 100. Monumentum, a tombstone.